Live from the Heartland, WLUW.org. Uh, you can listen to us live stream uh, anywhere in the world, and you can see all our goodies at Heartland Media. Slash no, well, that's Heartland Media on YouTube, but WLUW.org is where we stream live, I and LiveFromTheHeartland.com is the website. Thank you. All right, now we have to introduce our first speaker, who is... A delight to have. I'm so glad that we happened to be able to grab you for this short period of time. I saw an incredible film last night um, called Heather Booth Changed the World and uh, in an audience full of Chicagoans who so appreciated uh, seeing our history displayed like that because it was not just yours, it was all of ours. Because what you have done all your life, Heather, is bring people together to do good things, to get things done, and what an array, what an amazing history. How does it feel to get honored like that last night? Well, right now, I love you, Katie, and I love this show. <laughs> what a stitch. This is fabulous to be here with, with Tom, longtime organizer and activist, and uh, Mike, who we, we knew when he was doing uh, work in Uptown. Uh, for jobs or, jobs or income now, it's still a good, it's yes. still a good phrase, jobs <laughs> or income now. Uh, and community organizing, and Katie and I have been uh, partners in uh, in good trouble. In not, good not, trouble, not, part, not crime, but partners in good trouble. Uh, and uh, made a Washington campaign even before then, and now ongoing. Uh, and as uh, she said, always shows up, I see her. You know, she showed up at the Chewy <laughs> campaign. I go, okay, great. Now we're gonna win. Heather's here. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> but it was a little too late. So. Uh, Anyway, but, but it's great to be your partner and uh, great to come in here. We and see you every fall when we teach a, a class at DePaul. We show the movie Jane. And uh, oh, you show yeah. up, Mary uh, Driscoll shows up, and you know, a lot of oh, people. Oh, God, that's great. Yeah. And for those who, you may not know it in the listening audience, but the, uh, the movie Jane is about an underground abortion service that existed. Uh, it started in 1965. And between 1965 and 1973, when Roe v. Wade became the law of the land and it legalized and allowed women to decide when or whether to have a child, which is really the issue. Thank you. Uh, when that, uh, before that was passed, the women of Jane themselves performed 11,000 abortions. And we never want to go back to those times. We want to keep it safe and legal. And we can if we organize, which I guess is the theme. It was also a theme of the movie last night. And for those in the listening audience, there's another performance of the movie tonight. Uh, it's at the Cisco Theater tonight at 7.30. And it's the story of 50 years of organizing, much of it in Chicago. We'll see uh, some. What was it about your early organizing in Chicago that led you to form the Midwest Academy? Which many people don't know about, but in fact it's kind of the backdrop behind all sorts of organizing, not just here, but around the country now? Uh, Midwest Academy is a training center for organizers. And uh, it's trained thousands of organizers from NAACP and Sierra Club and Planned Parenthood and small groups and large groups. Uh, um, a lot of things led to the formation of the training center. In part, at that period of time, the movements of the 60s were breaking up. This was 1973. And people were confused and didn't know what to do. And I thought it made sense to not only have a place to talk about the skills, everything from how do you run a meeting, how do you speak in public, how do you uh, recruit other people, but also to discuss strategy. How do you figure out what to do when you don't know what to do? And so a fundamental of the Midwest Academy training is a strategic planning chart, a strategy chart. Boy, did you ever get credit for that last night. <laughs> I mean, the chart. So, so it's, it's one part of the movie, uh, and it tells that story. I do want to share there are three principles of the Academy and ways to think about direct action organizing that are, are useful to think about in any of the organizing we do. One is that you, in addition to the, based on the values that we care about, democracy, freedom, loving people, having dignity and respect, you actually need to fight for something that is going to give concrete improvements in people's lives, make people's lives better, uh, have air you can breathe, have uh, be able to walk to school and not get shot, to have more money in your pocket. The second is to give people a sense of their power, 
So it's not someone else doing good things for you, but in fact you winning it and you gain confidence. And the third is changing the relations of power and uh, building institutions as well as having a popular voice. Uh, like a citizens review board for the police, for example, would be the kind of structural reform that we'd like to see. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that brought you to that, that impressed me when I first heard them about your, your history was you're going to Mississippi in the Mississippi summer um, to the same exact place where the three civil rights workers were later found uh, murdered and um, buried. Uh, an incredibly dangerous place. I was about five years too young to do that. My parents wouldn't have let me. I was sort of relieved that in, in the movie your brother talked about your parents not being particularly happy that you were in such a, you were in danger, even though they completely supported the reason for it. I'm grateful to have been brought up in a loving family that had good values. Mm -hmm. um, and though my parents were very frightened, they did say I could go. Uh, Amazing. I might have gone anyway, but it just shows the, the kind of love. And I do think love needs to be at the core of the organizing we do. One other story on Mississippi Summer with a message for today. Uh, that was 1964, and a time when while they were looking for the, the three young men who were missing, Goodman, Cheney, Cheney and Schwerner, Schwerner. Right. what people may not know is they found the bodies of eight other black men mm -hmm. whose hands had been bound or feet chopped off, thrown into the Tallahatchie or Pearl River. And those deaths hadn't been, the, the missing people hadn't been reported before. And when they found the bodies, they weren't investigated. Because in Mississippi in 1964, black lives did not matter to those who were in power. And it's the reason there was the Summer Project. But we moved from a situation of such terror to within a year, because people organized, there was a Voting Rights Act. And Mississippi ended up with more African American elected officials than any other state in the country. And it says that if we organize, we can change the world. And particularly now, when we see so many things being pushed back, including what's happening to black lives, uh, criminal justice, looking for justice at all, voting rights, and we still say, if we organize, we will change this world. One of the things that you uh, beat back against and had to work against, particularly in those early years, was the sexism uh, in the movement. In fact, one of the things that sort of came out to me in the movie last, the film last night, which shows again tonight at Siskel Center, um, uh, is that the um, uh, God, who am I thinking of? The, 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 yes, uh, Alinsky wouldn't uh, let women organize. Or Alinsky said women can't be good organizers, and that's what sort of helped you go towards starting the Midwest Academy. You know the talk Alinsky, about sexism as an organizer, and the Alinsky training uh, and the Alinsky approach has created enormous and very important change in terrific ways. In Chicago, uh, the uh, Campaign Against Pollution that became then the Citizen Action Program was the first group that took on the original Mayor Daley right. and actually beat him. So that there's enormous change in, in a positive way that came out of that kind of organizing. At one point, uh, they, did, uh, they did say uh, women couldn't be organized. Now whether that was said to toughen people up <laughs> or if it was to uh, actually say what they thought. I don't know. What I do know is that we've all changed in our views because of a women's movement that said women should have full participation in the society. And so Midwest Academy in part was designed, going back to Tom's question, to uh, say there are different ways we can be together, combining movement, uh, sisterhood and brotherhood, a view of a beloved society, as well as uh, the rigor of a, an Alinsky kind of training and then creating something new. And for those who are interested in organizing, Midwest Academy is a good place to learn organizing. <laughs> MidwestAcademy.com. Uh, you know, speaking of organizing and Alinsky, I, uh, uh, I want to talk about charter schools and a vote that just came down in LA. I had lunch with our good friend Bob Lawson the other day. I love and Bob he was Lawson. a little disappointed. He said that um, 
the pro-charter people in California, unleashed by lots and lots of money, uh, won the vote, uh, won the control of the school board in L.A., and they're going to move more toward the privatization of the schools and voucher system. And one of the things that he said that was interesting is that they, they're good at organizing. So these are people in a divided country, even a divided Democratic Party around charter schools. You've got people backed by big money, some of them former Alinsky or Alinsky trained people mm -hmm. organizing for charter schools. So I'm just throwing that out because we're talking about organizing and going forward. We also have to face the fact that there is organizing that is uh, not in directed in the same way I think we would yeah, like to see society go. You're so right, Mike. The, there's a virulent right wing that has learned organizing techniques, much of it from the progressive movement. And in Chicago, we see how the public schools are being destroyed. My son, uh, Gene Booth, has been a teacher in the Chicago public schools for 18 years. Mm. And he faced uh, the layoffs when they close 1,000 schools, the 50 schools that get closed, the one after another, the difficulties, and all the problems of society that get dumped on the public schools without the resources to support, uh, to support education. <coughs> and the problem of charter schools, in part, is it has no standards, <coughs> none of the rules, and doesn't have to accept everyone. So the result is you starve the public schools and you uh, provide an alternative for uh, an increasing elite. So this is looking at organizing focused on a particular issue. and. I'd like to try to get a little bit more at the kind of tension I think there's been over the years as organizing has evolved between classic leadership development, trying to gain power, versus issues organizing, and where the role of electoral politics comes into play. Because there's been fierce discussions and battles. I think the lines are blurring a bit, and maybe with the new regime, maybe even more, about how organizing interfaces with electoral politics. Oh, that's where, do you, where do you come down on, we got to concentrate on the issues and local leadership development and stay away from politicians versus you know, getting out and canvassing and going door to door and making sure the right people get elected. Yeah. Um, you know, in my own history, in my early history, I was not very much focused on electoral politics. Part no, of I lived in early Chicago. And uh, or for me, I'm now 71, and I mention that in part to say for people who are listening, I started as a teenager, I'm now 71, you can do this for your whole life, not for a semester, <laughs> not for a year, not for a summer, but for your whole life, and still find this as a wonderful That's life. That's true for everybody at this table. <laughs> but for I'm going, the oldest. <laughs> for, for going back to uh, uh, politics and movement building and organizing, um, the original Mayor Daley, was in Chicago, and you know he gave the shoot to kill order uh, after the after Dr. King was killed, and uh, he really ignored so much of the city that I didn't feel that this was a politics I wanted to be part of. There were five people who were progressive on the city council. I worked for them and worked for some others, but it didn't seem like it was a pathway forward. And then in Mississippi, the same thing. The establishment was Democratic, and they were the people who kept the system as it was. In 1980, when Reagan was elected, and there was a pushback on all the progress we had made on women's rights, on civil rights, on voting rights, on environment, on every single area, I realized we need to be engaged in elections. And as Alice Palmer, uh, who's a former state rep, a dear friend, and is in the movie, She's which in the I film. hope you can see tonight at the Siskel Theater at 7.30, <laughs> uh, and Alice Palmer is going to be there, she had said to me, if you don't do politics, politics does you. Politics will do you. <laughs> and so I learned a lot about politics and how it also can be used to build organization. Very active in the Mayor Washington cam campaign. I worked for Katie and I both. We worked for Jackie Grimshaw, wonderful Jackie Grimshaw, who was Mayor Washington's Intergovernmental Affairs Director uh, and was the field director I worked, worked for her. And then learned a number of things about elections. And now, just to give a sense of how far we've come, this summer is going to be a resistance summer, meaning that lots of different groups have resistance plans on mobilizing, on organizing, like Tom is saying, going door to door, talking to people, and also moving it into the elections. And the Democratic Party has just announced 
that they are going to be engaging in a resistance summer, and I'm consulting with them on the design of the program, and working also with Move On, that has its resistance summer. I'm also working with them, and they're one group after another, so that the organizing and elections come together, and we try and find a way, we build our power so that there is more democracy and justice. Heather, where do you think the Democratic Party is going? I mean, you had uh, the split between the Hillary and the Bernie people. Uh, we have new uh, leaders of the Democratic Party. Are they going for the grassroots? Are they going to support the grassroots? Here in Illinois, we have two multi-millionaire guys running against two progressives. So I'm not sure at a time when you think the party is moving to the left and becoming more progressive, there is also a residual force in the Democratic Party that may hold that back. I always put my faith in what we do when we organize, and it depends on who engages. The concept behind Resistance Summer is that the National Party is going to give uh, a grant on the basis of a strategic plan to each state that wants a state party that wants to participate. And the very plan is to say, you need to, if you hire folks to play these roles, you need to work with the external groups, the grassroots groups, whether it's uh, unions or Black Lives Matter or women's organizations, um, working on the kinds of issues you were announcing at the, at the top of the hour, and then take that into organizing, canvassing, voter registration, going door to door, house parties, ending up with a Labor Day event so that we stand together between those in elections, in party formations, as well as in community and try and bring them together. It, the future depends on what we do. So the challenge of the new regime, um, moving beyond marches, uh, is, is this summer that you're describing uh, enough to uh, address what we're facing? We're living in such perilous times. I mean, families will be separated. Uh, Our misery will be increased. People. Some people may die, die from, from the situation. It can't be uh, overstated how serious the situation is. And it's also an inspiring time, and inspiring because people are organizing from the women's march, the science march, the climate march, so the tax march. So there's marches and there's also organizing. So we deepen it with the organizing. But mobilizing is part of it to show our strength. It's also engaging and recruiting other people. There are 12 million people who voted both for Obama and for... Uh, for uh, number 45. <laughs> we say, to we, say his we name. refer to him as number 45. Hard to say his name. And some yeah, that's portion of those people, right. we need to actually engage and understand what's going on in their life and what we can do to say together we can make it better. There also are those people who just didn't vote because they're so lacking hope. So we need to engage in those communities also. Yeah. And it all depends on what we do. If we organize, we can change the world. And that's the message also of this film tonight, I hope you'll come see, at the Gene Siskel Center at 7.30. Um, Jackie Grimshaw will be there, former Intergovernmental Affairs Director for Mayor Washington. Alice Palmer will be there, state rep. They're both in the movie along with many other people. Uh, in the in the film, Jan Schakowsky's in in the movie. Jan was uh, there last night. It was it, it's Louis really Gutierrez. A, it's, it's a love and fest. Katie Hogan's in the film. Oh, oh good. Mad. I am. Where? I didn't see myself. So uh, I knew we could probably fill an hour with you, Heather. But um, in looking for music to frame your conversation, we don't have a lot of good organizing songs. We have chants and we make up lyrics to other tunes. So we're going to hear another version of Joe Hill because it's the classic. It's about miners whose jobs 45 wants to get back. But it's about other stuff, too. And this is a version I don't think people have heard very often if no one cares to bring it up. Let's plug the movie one more time. So tonight at 7.30 at the Siskel Center, it's called Heather Booth, Changing the World. It's about building movements. You can also change the world if you organize. Uh, hope to see you at 7.30 at the Siskel Center. And right down there see you organizing. And, and as Joe Hill said, don't, don't mourn, organize. organize. Right on, sister. <laughs>